Welcome back to CMO Live, where I help real estate agents cut through the noise and understand how to succeed with modern real estate marketing tactics and how to grow your business this year. Let me click through to here. Today, we're gonna to be talking about uh, three ways to have how to analyze real estate websites. Um, that's gonna help you understand, one, how we analyze things for the success guide that we put out where we look through the thousands of real estate websites that use us and many, many more websites um, in projects outside of Showcase to look at what makes those websites successful. Specifically then how we dug into the data that we're gonna talk about a little bit to make that makes our top 24 uh, websites the most successful. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So this year alone, my team has analyzed more than 100,000 real estate websites. Uh, we're going to talk through a couple of those tools. And the first one that I want to talk about is builtwith.com. Huge fan of builtwith. Let me bring up another window here so that I can share this with you. And we'll actually just do this in real time to, uh, to see what it uh, does. So um, when we go to it, let me do a screen share here for you. Think about this as it's all public information. So here we're looking at built with, it's just available at builtwith.com. Uh, you can enter any URL in here uh, to respect the privacy of some of our customers and even some of the people that aren't that I've looked at their websites. We're gonna use my personal website, not a real estate website, but uh, just to give you an example of what's available here. And so one, you can enter in any URL here. And when I enter kurtuler.com, what it does is based on the public uh, code that they can see, uh, it's a free tool here that uh, it's gonna show you a lot of information about that. Now, they, they do have a, pay, a paid uh, option here, which does cost several thousand dollars a month that allows those of us with more technical skills or people that, uh, or that employ uh, some developers that can go out and analyze um, you know, websites at scale. But for an individual agent, I love this tool because you might be on somebody's website and go, God, I think I really like this theme. And sometimes this will show it to you. The next method really will show it to you. You may want to know, are they doing remarketing or not on that website? Again, this is going to show you that. So when I click on this, it breaks it into a number of different sections. The first here is analytics and tracking. And you're going to see that there is a tool uh, that's being used on my website called Albacross. Uh, Albacross, <clears throat> It even tells you a little bit about it here. You can click to it and it's gonna show you other information about that. But if I wanna know what this is, here's the easiest way, because Albuquerque, or in this case, Built With is going to try to uh, you know, keep you on their website more. I'm gonna open up Google and I'm gonna type uh, Albuquerque and analytics website. The reason I'm typing that is because Built With did tell me that it was an analytics tool. So the first option as I scroll down through the ads is, bam, here's Albacross. Let's click on this. Oh. And if we notice, here, this logo is the same logo that we saw right here. So I know that I'm, I found the right tool. And it tells you what this tool is. It gives you information. This is, starts to give you insights into budget as well. It starts to tell you how much that tool costs for them to use. So is this just a really cheap tool like a Hootsuite or a Buffer or is it something much more expensive? So when you start to go through this, you can start to kind of like keep a tally to know about how much this agent might be paying for, uh, for parts of the marketing package that they put together. We're gonna go back to Built With because this is not just to tell you about using Albacross. You can see I use Google Analytics to be expected. You can see I use Shareaholic. Again, I'm not trying to sell any one of these individual tools but like share how like I happen to use for doing some of my social media tracking and easy shares on there. Uh, Monster Insights, can, easy way to connect Google Analytics into your WordPress. A lot of themes do do this, but I find this tool does help a little bit better. And, and so again, you get to use Built With to get free insight to just enter any URL and see what's available on that website. Uh, you can see I use Yoast for my primary SEO, Jetpack, uh, there's the uh, BJ Lazy Load for WordPress. I'm gonna show you another way that we, we find that later. See what I'm using for caching. Now under frameworks, 
in this case, it does actually tell you what my WordPress theme is. And here it's mentioned as Enfold. We're gonna show you a way within the code to find that because it is kind of rare for, for this tool to actually show you what the theme is. I keep scrolling down through here. Again, there's just a plethora of information that this tool will, will, will give you to let you know what's being used by the, that website or that marketer. <clears throat> See if there's anything else here that's really interesting I may wanna kind of call out to, uh, to look at. Uh, DreamHost, in this case you can see that I, I, I host on a private server on DreamHost. Uh, is there any other things on here available? Nothing that's jumping out. Again, it's depending on the website that you look at, you may, get, you may get very little information that's helpful. You may get some very unique things to find out as well. Uh, for instance, it doesn't show on here that I'm, I'm not doing any remarketing ad, uh, ads. It would show you if there's a Facebook remarketing pixel on here or a Google remarketing pixel. It would just show you under an ad, uh, an ad section here. So this is the first way that's really good, I find, for you to analyze a website and get a quick idea about what is available. Builtwith.com, easy to go to. Okay, the next, and uh, this starts, this is gonna feel a little complicated, but you do not have to know any code. Now, of course, if, if, if you can write code, um, PHP or any language, it would mean there's more meaningful information here. But I found in my workshops, I can show any realtor how to do this, and you can find a couple of really uh, key pieces of information for you. That first is what theme is being used on a site. Now, we do maintain a list of some of the best themes that, that we see used uh, on real estate websites. It's about a dozen, sometimes 14 themes long. So if you would like that, just comment below and we'll send you a message with that or you can hit up Andy or Tiffany on our team and they, they're happy to share that with you. But in this case, we're gonna teach you how to look at the code for a website. This is all public information, whether you go to CNN.com, Fox News, MSNBC, Showcase IDX, or my website. If you're on a Mac, you can go up to, when you're in Chrome, this is what it looks like. It's very similar in Firefox and very similar in um, Safari and other tools. But in Chrome, you're gonna go to View, and you're gonna click Developer, and you're gonna then click this View Source. And when I do that, <clears throat> let, me look back, look, let me come back to screen share and show you. So we're gonna go to the About Us page in Kurt Euler. And so I've talked about in some of the other videos how important it is to actually have a really detailed About Us page. In this case, if you look through, you can read a whole lot about me. But the reason I say that is like Google really likes it. It'll increase your sales. But I'm using this, this page just as an example of, imagine that I've never been to this website and I click through and I go, wow, I, I, I like this here. In this case, there's a picture of me with the president, um, picture of me with the president again, speaking uh, with one of my former mentors at Google and you go, wow, I like the way this theme feels. What theme are they using? I, all I have to do is go up to view uh, on the menu, click uh, that developer tools and source, and it brings up this. Now this looks complicated. Again, you don't have to understand all of this. So the first thing we wanna know here is what theme is it? So all I have to do is do a search on this page, just like you would do a search on any other website. On a Mac, that's Command F. On a PC, it's um, it's Control F, and I type theme, and it's going to jump me down. Let me zoom in here for you. Oh, let me, all right. Let me come back here. Oh, let me jump around here. So all I have to do is click on the find a few times. The first time was there it goes with theme. And then it pops through and you see this line. There's the URL in WP content slash themes slash enfold. This is no different than when you look at where a file is stored in your computer. Uh, the curtular.com is my host, is basically your computer, the server name. And then your theme is almost always stored underneath WP content themes and then, and then the next name, uh, name is the name of the theme. Now, if it's a truly custom theme, and we do have a lot of customers that 
have a certified partner that builds them their own custom theme, but most don't, I'd say. And if I was building a website, I'm gonna use a, a theme that I can get that's a reputable theme. I'll show you how to pick those later. But in this case, I could, that next name is in fold. And I go, oh, wow, okay, well, what is that? So let me come back over to this window and I'm gonna type in fold WordPress theme. Because again, the name was in fold and I know it's a WordPress theme. And so what pops up? I can go to theme forest and I see, yep, that's that theme. I do know, yes, this is exactly where I purchased this theme from, paid $59 from it. And uh, there's things I'm gonna walk through before, such as it's been used hundreds of thousands of times. But either way, if you wanna know what theme's being used, you like that website when you look at it and you go, gosh, like, what are they using? Just finding this code and searching for theme or themes is gonna take you to a lot of different locations. In this case, I found 25 different locations of themes that all of which have that same structure that's WP content slash themes slash unfold. And that unfold is what you're looking for. Maybe another thing you're wanting to look for is what plugins are being used. Built with, as I just showed you, will sometimes show you those, but let's, let's look through here again. And so let's see if I can go back to the very beginning of the page. So this is the first time. So, not every time, not every uh, plugin is going to be seen this way. A lot of plugins do work on the console or behind the scenes, but if it touches the code in any uh, the front-facing code in any way, there's usually going to be a reference to it. So in this case, you can see Pop-Up Press. If you look that up, you're going to see that it's a plugin that's uh, great for doing pop-ups and allowing you to do lead capture. You could drop in a short code in there and to, to prompt the user to register for a website. Uh, if I keep scrolling through, we see Yoast is being used. Uh, we already saw that in Built With. If I keep growing through here, there's that Monster Insights that, that we saw before. Let's see if there's more that it shows on here. Okay, here's where we start to see WP content slash plugins, not slash themes, slash plugins, and then that next folder is the name of the plugin. So pop-up press, you can go and Google that to try to find it if it wasn't mentioned the way that we saw it earlier. Uh, there's Jetpack, Google Analytics for WordPress. Let's keep going and seeing what else is in here. Okay, here's another reference. There's that BJ lazy load that we saw. On, that we saw. So this is just one of the ways, as I mentioned, that you can find out some of the plugins that are being used. Like if you do like the, the pop-ups that are done on my website, Try Pop-Up Press. There, it has a lot of functionality that I'm not using, but it's a good way to kind of test things like that. Now, let me slip back over here. So if I turn this off first, it can keep progressing. The third way to analyze websites is frankly with our internal data and our proprietary tools. As I mentioned, I've looked at more than 100,000 websites this year. The detailed technicals, a lot of times traffic, I have access to a lot of tools that shows me um, information about the traffic that comes to individual websites. Uh, the more popular website is, the better it is, what keywords that they rank for. <clears throat> but because we have so many thousands of websites that have been built on Showcase, we're able to look at both that data and work with some of our partners, like those marketing agencies and web developers that are certified Showcase IDX partners and find out uh, what they're seeing from some of the analytics they see. And, and in general, that's, data is what I use to come up with a lot of my marketing strategies that we share with you. There's things that I get to test and I think more than appropriate for me to test with. And by all means, I advise everybody testing, what, testing. But when I come to you and I give you a suggestion, I wanna make sure that it works. So we're looking at the data from not just our websites, but, but said more than 100,000 websites. I helped an external uh, research group earlier this year analyze more than 125,000 websites in the real estate space. That's just a huge amount of data set that, that we get to go look at at scale to, to help you with these uh, suggestions. <clears throat> so uh, specifically, the details we're gonna start to walk through in just a couple of videos are gonna go feature by feature for the top 24 websites that are built on Showcase IDX to see what features they're using that makes them successful and giving you ranges for what those settings should be for where you wanna set uh, start your testing with to see what works best for, for you and your clients. 
So if you'd like some insights into what the most successful real estate websites and the specific settings are, continue to join me in the rest of the series. In the next video specifically, we're gonna walk through um, how do agents and growing businesses define success when it comes to our website. Before we start walking into what the settings should be, I think it's really important that we just take a few minutes to level set on what success looks like, whether that's driving leads or improving your brand, traffic to your website. Those are all things we would like to do, but we also need to focus on individual pieces of those at different times. So I look forward to talking to you in the next video.